So, at this point, everything's going amazing. Yeah. Spend, making lots of money. Yeah. Spending lots of money. Yeah. And you somehow end up in France. Yeah. How did how'd you end up in France? I met a girl in New York. She was uh, Miss France. Her name is Sonia Rowland. Mm. Miss France 2001. I met her at a, at a New York party. We hit it off immediately. She became my girlfriend. Went to go chase her. And you know what I'm saying? I went to France to go be with my girlfriend. Stayed with her. She went out of town. Um, when she went out of town, I ended up going to, I think it was like Club Pink or I, I don't remember what it was, but it was Club something. And see, when you're in a foreign country that speaks a language that you don't speak, and you encounter somebody who speaks English or your language, all of a sudden the communication goes 10 levels high. I was in a club and I saw some people just saw, not even spoke to. I saw some people in the club that I knew that I knew of from LA and they weren't, they weren't the, like the night I knew that they were up to no good. I knew that they were drug dealers. I knew, I knew what they were about. However, their lifestyle, the girls, the, 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 the tables at the club, the cars, the money. I've always wanted that. I've always wanted that. And so instantly I just walked up and I was like, yo man, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. I've seen you at this club and everything. And we just instantly hit it off. They're like, what are you doing out here? And you know, I'm out here on business and everything. And all of a sudden one thing led to another. And I, I'm, I've always asked people, how can I get what you have since, since I was little, how can I do that? How can I, it's just that, that I've always asked questions and I was like, how can I live a life like you guys? I, and I see you have like the girls and the cars and everything. What do y'all do? And that's when the opportunity to do something was presented. And that opportunity was me driving a car over a border, getting 4,000 uh, pounds, the, 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 the UK pound, the European pound at that time was two point, was the equivalent of 2.1 US dollar. So like eight thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars a drive, and how long did that drive usually take? It was a full day. So I would fly into the country, drive this uh, luxury vehicle from from uh, from the UK to the ferry, over the ferry into Rotterdam, drop the car off, grab my package, done. I don't, I didn't ask what it was. I knew that it was up to no good. I just didn't quite know exactly what it was. And so I was like, yo, so, and this is while everything was going great in modeling. I had billboards, magazines and everything. However, I'd never had that quick of money. I do a modeling job. I don't get paid for like another three months, four months or something like that. And, and even though I was making six figures, I was just like, yo, I just made four eight thousand dollars in a day. That was quick. What if I did this like five times? Boom, that's quick. And so that's instant cash. I never had that. And I never thought about the repercussions. I've I've been like this since since I was a little kid. Find a way to make money and then you just do whatever you need to do to get it. I even dove when I was a little kid, I dove in Alligator Island, which was a man made lake infested with alligators yeah to go and get golf balls and if you got caught in the lake you'll get like you'd get fined so i'd have a trash bag there like a trash bag was floating i would swim down to the bottom of the lake get the golf balls you know there was because i could sell them four for a dollar to the um to the uh the the golfers and they'll buy them just polish them off sell them four for a dollar no one else went into that lake. So I would go into the places that most people wouldn't go, and it was infested with golf balls and alligators. I would get them, never got touched with the alligator, but also didn't go in there with fear. I didn't ever think about the re repercussion. I wouldn't do that now, <laughs> but I didn't think about the repercussion. Same mentality. I'm going to do whatever I need to do, not thinking about the repercussion, Driving this car, I did that seven times. I did the route seven times. So that's 8,000, 8,000. And this is over a two-month time span. 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000. Cash, tax-free. And I'm like, 
yo, this is the lick. <laughs> this is the lick until I got caught. And tell me exactly how that happened. Because that's that's why I remember you mentioned you just had bad feelings the entire day. Your intuition was just yeah. going off. So this time they had, I was, they, they changed the route. So this time the route was going into France. And I was like, man, there's something about this don't feel right. But Wait, where was it going before that? To the UK. To oh, the UK, okay. From the UK to Rotterdam. Okay. Yeah. But I just met the people in France, mm -hmm. you know? So um, from the UK to Rotterdam, every single time, UK, Rotterdam, UK, Rotterdam, UK, Rotterdam. And then when I went to France, I was like, man, something about this just don't feel right. The car didn't feel right. I get to, uh, I get to this like little stop <clears throat> and the instructions was to come out, open up the back. And I'd never got those instructions before. I'm like, why open up the back, close it and then get in and drive. I'm like, something about that don't feel right. It's just something, whatever. There were Congo drums in the back. I'm like, yo, what? And you didn't the, know what was in the Congo drums. So I didn't even never knew what I was driving from before. And so that's why I never even had it on my conscience. Right. And I, I didn't ask neither, nor did I look yeah. in the back. You didn't want it on your conscience. At all. The whole time I'm like, what's in those Congo drums? What's in those Congo drums? What's in those Congo drums? And this nasty feeling starts bubbling up. Weird stuff starts happening. And I, it was just, everything about it was weird. I get to the stop. The one time they tell me to get out, x-ray my car. Soon as they, soon as they x-ray that, well, they didn't x-ray the car, but they, they x-rayed the, they took out the Congo drums. They said, oh, it's my friend's car, yada, yada, yada. They x-rayed, they put the Congo drums in the x-rays and I seen these little, the shadow of these like little things. And I'm just like, my life is over. And it just, everything just sunk my whole entire it was like my knees were weak. I didn't know what this because I didn't know what it was. Bro, they went to go open up the Congo drums and it was empty. And I was like, maybe this is my chance. I'm like, and they couldn't even understand. They're like, how, how is this possible? They took an ax, open up the lining mm. of the Congo drums and in there were these little yellow bricks. And I was like, my life is over. And I didn't know, I, I had no idea what it was. And then they put me in cuffs. And they took me to the interrogation place. And I'm just like, Dad, what did you, what did you do? What, Garen, what did you do? Like, how did you get yourself into this? You had so much stuff going on for you. And that's the only time I actually regretted. And I was like, damn. In the interrogation room, after they gave me like a little corner slice of bread every day, I didn't get to brush my teeth. I didn't get to take a shower. And they were trying to force me to, to, uh, to admit of who it was. Yeah. Nah. nah, bro. I love my family too much and I love my life too much. So... I was just like, they showed me video of me on, on camera. And I said, that's not me. And I don't know who that is. Video of you like at the stop surveillance video of me hanging out with the people. Oh, wow. So they were on you for a while. They were on them for a while. Oh, okay. And I just happened to be associated. Mm. So they showed me video of me hanging out with them. And I was like, that ain't me. I'm looking at me saying that ain't me. And then finally they take me to a prison. And what before they take me to a prison, I make, I make front page of the, the newspaper as a member of the American connection. Wow. It was like, and it was, but then once I found like they, they, they went through all of the stuff and it ended up being 6.2 kilos of heroin. Mm. And I was like, yo. 
I have never had a sip of alcohol in my life. Smoke weed one time in what? 11th grade. Don't do drugs. And I'm, I just got busted for drugs. And I'm like, my life is over. Literally. That's what I said. My life is over 6.2 kilos of heroin front page of the newspaper. And then all of a sudden I found out that the car I was in was a stolen luxury vehicle. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it, it start trailing. I start. And then all of a sudden it was connected to the mafia. Oh. It was, it was deep trails. It was deep. Like I thought it was just like from here to here. No, nah, it was way. I was like, wait, hold on. I don't know nothing about any of this stuff. The one thing that saved me is the paper that was inside of the, of the, um, cause see, they try to pin the whole thing on me at all the stuff. Yeah. The paper that was inside of the Congo drums. Cause see, they had my whole flight itinerary was from a different, was from a date where I already had, I had proof that I was in America. Mm. So it had to have been somebody else that had done that, but they were trying to say that I did this whole thing. And I was just like, it wasn't me, wasn't me, wasn't me, wasn't me, wasn't me. Wasn't me. 